We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He didn't say babes. He didn't say children. He said sons. Helios. Babes and children are not led by the Spirit. That's why I keep saying over and over, keep emphasizing to God's people the need for maturity, the need to develop, the need to grow up. We're going to learn how Jesus was led by the Spirit. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your faithfulness helping us, Lord, to navigate these dangerous times, to know, to hear your voice, and to be led by your Spirit. To do your will, Father, not our own. We ask that you bless and that you anoint, Lord, as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Being led by the Spirit of God, it's not an option. You're not going to make it, folks. You say, well, I'm saved, Brother Joseph. Yeah, Jesus said, they that endure to the end shall be saved. You're not going to make it if you don't grow up, develop, and learn to be led by the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, Ye are not under the law. That tells me that if you're not led by the Spirit, you are under the law. To some degree, you're still under the law if you're not being led of the Spirit. I mean, no, there is the law of the Spirit. The Bible also speaks of the law of faith. We're not supposed to be living under the law, the Ten Commandments, people. We're supposed to be walking by faith, living by faith, led of the Spirit of God. If you're under the law, it's because you're in sin. That's why we see John saying, my little children sin not. You don't see him saying that to sons. You don't see him saying that to those that have matured. If you're still sinning, 
it brings you under the law, folks. Every time you sin, you come back under the law. And, and it's not until the Lord forgives you, cleanses you, brings you into that right standing to where you can be in the Spirit. But even to be in the Spirit, you have to be filled with the Spirit. Is it possible to be in the Spirit and not be filled with the Spirit? Yes, but it's a lot more difficult. There, there are those that the Spirit of God comes upon because of the blood of Jesus, because they've been saved. But to be led of the Spirit in, in the manner that we read in the Scripture, you've got to be filled with the Spirit. Folks, listen to me. God is offering us an overcoming life in the Spirit. This idea of carnality and getting by and doing our best, that's what we've been hearing for this negative message. God knows I'm going to sin. Provision has been made for overcomers, people. When's the last time you heard a preacher, a minister in the mainstream ever preaching about the overcoming message? Being an overcomer. You don't. You don't. In fact, what you mostly hear in the mainstream is, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Show me that in the Bible that we're supposed to be just sinners saved by grace. Why does the Bible call those that are mature and those that have quit sinning, why does it call them saints? I'm sure some of you are going to fall out with me, but there is people, there is a life above sin. There certainly is. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. Sin shall not have dominion over you. I realize that this is new doctrine for many of you, but there is an overcoming life. And you've heard this preacher speaking about this overcoming life, but many of you revert back to the messages you've heard in the past. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do my best. My pastor used to say, your best will split hell wide open. I want you to understand that God has made provision to be more than conquerors, to be overcomers, to live a victorious life on this earth. Blessed is the man that doesn't give in to temptation. Amen? Hey, God would not have made it a requirement to live above sin if he didn't make provision for it. He wouldn't be very just, would he? God is not asking you and I or requiring you and I of something that we cannot do with his help. God has made a way for mere mortals, those that are sold under sin, those that were lost and carnal natures, with a depraved nature, he's made provision for us to be transformed, to be changed, to be restored into his image and his likeness. Praise God. You can live on this earth like Jesus. Well, Brother Joseph, you shouldn't say that. You can live on this earth like Jesus if you'll do what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? 
He didn't do his own will. Let's, let's listen to his own words. John chapter 5, verse 30. This is Jesus speaking. I can of my own self do nothing. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Why? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Is that a requirement to do the will of the Father? You, you, you got to understand that Jesus Christ is not just our Savior. He's not just our Deliverer. Listen to me. He is the pattern for the sons of God to live. Jesus is the first begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. And he is the pattern for the sons of God. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, what? To them gave he power to become the sons of God. You're not going to please God in the flesh. You're not going to please God being in sin. You're not going to please God giving in to temptation. You're going to please God the same way Jesus did. Yes, you can be like Jesus. And you need to be like Jesus. The cliches are not going to make you an overcomer. What would Jesus do? That's not going to work. You need him to transform you, to change your nature. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. Jesus Christ could do nothing of himself. Amen. He did not seek his own will. And you're going to see that that is a requirement. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. This is not just a memory verse. This is not just a, a scripture. Listen to me, people. This is a reality. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's not speaking to the world, people. He's not speaking to the world. I don't think God's people really read their Bibles. Jesus said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit is going to be taken away. And every branch in him that is bearing fruit, he purgeth it, that it would bring forth more fruit. And our Heavenly Father is glorified when we bring forth much fruit. But he said, every branch that is in him that does not bear fruit, he's going to remove. If you're not attached to the vine, you're not saved. And those branches will eventually be cast into the fires. We must be attached to Christ, abiding in Christ, have his life flowing in us and through us, producing fruit for the kingdom. Otherwise, you're going to be taken away by the Father. 
the husbandman. There is a requirement. You must do the will of God the Father, which is in heaven. Jesus did only the will of the Father. He said, I, I can of my own self do nothing. We all must come to this place. What a wonderful place to come to. I can of my own self do nothing. Have you come to that place of dependence on the Lord yet? That you only do the will of the Father. That you only do those things that please the Father. I don't think any of us have arrived. But we're supposed to be following on. To be the sons of God. Amen. Fully grown and developed. And to walk on this earth the same way Jesus did. I can tell you this. In the 30 years I've been serving the Lord, I can tell you this. I've experienced it. I've tasted it. I know what it is to walk like Jesus walked. But to walk that way constantly, consistently? No. Because we have that flesh. Anybody listening? We have an adversary. But I've tasted it. I've tasted of it. And it is wonderful to live that overcoming, to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, that when temptation comes, you, it doesn't even affect you. Amen. When you're in the Spirit, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, it doesn't even affect you. God has provided the overcoming life in the Spirit so that when the devil does come to tempt us, he can't find anything in us. Just like Jesus. Many times we want to look at Jesus and say, well, he, he could live that way because he's Jesus, because he's the Son of God. But he's made provision. God has made provision for us to live the way Jesus lived. Amen. To live an overcoming life. Praise the Lord. And again, there are those in the scripture called saints. It's not like the Catholic Church that puts uh, apostles on pedestals. And those that are not even apostles like mother teresa or whatever and calls them saints no whosoever will can be a saint of god amen god is no respecter of persons we can all be saints we can all live the life of a saint on this earth it's up to us if we're going to surrender to that do we want to live for ourselves? Do we want to live for this life in this world? Or are we going to live for him? You can't live for God living for yourself. You can't do the will of the Father doing your own will. You got to make up your mind. And if you'll mean business, God will help you. It's like my pastor said when he was in Bible school, he said, a te one of the teachers said to the students one day, he said, Students, if you can stand the pull, God will pull you through. Amen? Not one of us could do it if God didn't pull us through. But he's willing if we can stand the pull. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you know of anything better than being like Jesus? Than living a life like Jesus lived? Do you know anything better?
I love the fact that God is no respecter of persons. That means I don't have to look down through history and say, well, I wish God would do that for me, what he did. Or I have to look in the Bible and say, I wish God would do for me what he did for Paul, what he did for Peter, what he did for these other, these apostles. Listen. Whosoever will. We can all attain to the measure, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Every one of us. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. That makes it tight, people. That makes it a narrow way, a straight and a narrow way. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth continues to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Hell is a prepared place for an unprepared people. God did not create hell for souls. It was created for Satan and his angels. But you can be a rebel if you want to be. You can rebel against, rebel against God, rebel against his kingdom, just like Lucifer did. But you're going to go to the same place. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee. Every knee is going to bow. One way or the other, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Some are going to do it willingly, and some not willingly. They're going to be forced. Are you listening? There are those that are going to rule with a rod of iron. In Christ's kingdom. Every knee shall bow. We see in the scripture during the millennial reign. There are those that are not going to be willing. To come up to the feast. Of the Lord. To celebrate. The feast of tabernacles. Rebellious. Stubborn. And during the millennial reign. They're going to be stubborn and rebellious. And there are going to be those that are going to rule with a rod of iron during the millennial reign. And there are going to be examples made in the kingdom. Those that are rebels. Those that rebel against God's kingdom. Those that are lawless. Anybody listening? And they're going to be made an example. We read right in the scripture, the Lord says, they shall be dashed to pieces. Just like a vessel of the potter. What do you, how do you suppose they're going to be dashed to pieces? With a rod of iron, people. It's coming. It is coming. Christ's kingdom is coming. It's not going to be unruly. It's not going to be lawlessness. Christ, you're talking about Christ. You're talking about the king of glory. You think he's just going to allow his kingdom to get out of hand? You think he's just going to allow it to become confusion? No. There's going to be order in his kingdom. And all those that are not in order, all those that are not following the rule of law in his kingdom. They're going to be made an example of. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You want to be one of those that rules in his kingdom with a rod of iron? What does it say? 
all disobedience will be corrected by those that have been made obedient. When your obedience is fulfilled, then God will use you to help others to obey, to other, for, help others to straighten out. Amen. I want to say this again. There won't be any lawlessness in Christ's kingdom. There won't be any lawlessness. And the moment it shows its, rears its ugly head, the, the moment it's going to be dealt with, nipped in the bud, and it's going to be made an example. It's going to, you look in the Old Testament. That was the Lord that told them to stone their children, to stone the teenagers that become rebellious. The stonings that took place, that was under Christ's rule in the Old Testament. Or I should say under the law. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. He came to fulfill. And it's going to be wonderful for those that are living in Christ, those that are living according to the law of God in Christ's kingdom. But for those that are rebels, those that are living in Christ's kingdom, that are rebels, they're going to be corrected. They're going to be chastened. This is the time, people, to get right. This is the time to become part of his kingdom. This is the time to become part of his plan and his purpose. How glorious his kingdom's going to be. Not going to be corruption in the leadership, in the government. Praise God. Jesus said we shall be as the angels. Think about that. Mull that over for a little bit. Shall be as the angels. Oh, praise God. We're going to rule in his kingdom. We're going to reign with him. Glory to God. How many right now, after hearing this message, Lord, I want to do the will of God. I don't want to do my will anymore. I don't want to be weak anymore in my flesh. I don't want to give in to the flesh. I want to live for Christ. I want to live holy. I want to live a separated life from this world. If you understand what God is offering you, you will. You will. God bless you.